Hey everybody, it's that time again. That's right, it's math time. All aboard the math train. Hey, I'm so glad that you are here with us today. It is so affirming to me that you are joining us and that we're gonna solve these problems together. Today we're talking about comparing numbers. All right, how can we compare numbers? And we're gonna talk about notation of how we can compare numbers. That's how we write it out, right? Okay, so I'm gonna start off with three problems here. And as we're thinking through this, I want you to be thinking, how do these numbers compare to each other? And what symbols or in what ways could we write how they compare. All right, so our first one is 23 and 34. Do you notice that there's a that blank space in between? Well, we want to fill it in with some symbol that makes a, a true statement, okay? So 23, we know that 23 is made up of two tens, two groups of tens, and three ones. Well, 34 has three groups of tens and four ones, all right? We know that 34 is larger than 23, all right? So you're, you'll hear words like larger, smaller, fewer, and more when we're talking about comparing numbers. But when we talk about the symbols, let's think about that. 23, I know, is less than 34. So we have these symbols like greater than, less than, and equal to, and those are great symbols to compare numbers together. So let's do another one. All right, 35 and 34. Now these numbers are really close, but we know that 35 is one more than 34. So 35 is greater than 34. Okay, last one of these kind of starter problems for us today. 8 plus 2, how does that compare to 10? Well, notice we don't just have two numbers like we did in our previous problems. Now we have to figure out, well, what is 8 plus 2? So let's count on from 8, and we're going to count on two times, right? So 8, and then I go 9, 10. Well, 8 plus 2 is 10. How does 10 compare to 10? Well, it's the same. It's the same. So that means we're going to use that equal sign. So 10 equals 10. Great job. Now we're going to move on to something a little bit different, and we're going to use something called a hundreds chart. Have you ever seen a hundreds chart? I bet you have. So here's a hundreds chart, and now what you notice is that hey, there's some numbers missing. There's a line going on our hundreds chart, and that is one of our tasks today. We've got to figure out how can we figure out what number should go in there. Can we solve the problem? All right, well, notice that there's two different lines. One is vertical. That means it's going up and down. There's another line that goes side to side. That's called horizontal. And when you notice patterns in the hundreds chart, if you go horizontal, how do the numbers change down the row? Well, it's just changing by one, right? So let's start with that one. All right, notice that we have a 44, but then here's that, that missing number. We, we're missing the next few numbers. Can we figure them out? Well, we're counting by ones. So 44, add one, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Great job. We've now completed those missing numbers on our horizontal line. Now let's move to the vertical line. Okay, vertically, what do you notice about how the numbers change in the hundreds chart? Well, they're going by tens. So look at the four. Okay, so if we have a four, I know that if I go down, it goes 4, 14, 24, 34. It's counting by tens. Well, scoot over to where our missing numbers are right? It has the 5, but then we have missing numbers going down. So let's go from there. 5, 15, 25, 35, and there's that 45 we've already discovered. Amazing work, everybody. All right, last task of the day. Are you ready? Here's the scenario. Miss Courtney has 25 books. Now, Miss Stacy has 70 books. All right, so if we were just going to stop there and say compare those numbers, we know Miss Stacy has more books than Miss Courtney, right? 70 is larger than 25. But what if we said by how many? Can you figure out how many more books Miss Stacy has than Miss Courtney? I bet you can. And we're going to use a hundreds chart to do this. All right, so if we start at 25 on our hundreds chart, and we look at that and we go, okay, how do I get down to the 70? Well, let's start going down. Now, we said when we move down here, we're, 
counting by tens, right? So start with 25, let's count by tens, and we go 35, 45, 55, 65. Well, we move down how many times? Four. We said 10, 20, 30, 40. All right, now we're down to 65. Now that's not 70, so now we have to scoot over and go horizontal. So let's count by ones. One, two, three, four, and five. We're at 40 plus five, that's 45. Amazing work, everybody. Keep learning and keep problem solving, and I'll see you again real soon.